Hello and welcome to section 10, deploying app volumes in a Citrix Zen app environment. As we've previously discussed in earlier sections of this course, a key feature of app volumes is that it is not just restricted to working with VMware technology and products. It is also not limited to working in a virtual desktop environment either. It can also be used to deliver applications to servers that in turn deliver application sessions or published applications to end users. So in this section, we're going to look at how App Volumes integrates into a Zen app environment for doing just that. So what we're going to cover in this section. In this section, we're going to focus on the steps required to build and configure App Volumes to work in a Citrix Zen app environment. We're going to start by configuring an RDSH server that we will use as the provisioning machine to create and capture app stacks from. As part of this, we will also install the App Volumes agent. Next, we're going to take a production-like RDSH server from our example lab environment and install the Citrix VDA onto it before then assigning the newly provisioned app stacks to the same server. The next part is of the configuration is the Citrix-based components, where we will create a machine group and then a delivery group for our app stack-based applications. Finally, we will log in as an end user and test that we can launch an application and that it runs as it should do. Before we move on to the first video, I'm just going to take a few moments to recap on what the infrastructure looks like for a Zen app environment. As with the process described for building app stacks for use with virtual desktop machines, the first part of the process is to build and provision a machine from which we can create app stacks from. Remember, app stacks need to be provisioned using the same operating system as they're going to be delivered to. So in this example for our Zen app server, the provisioning machine will be a Windows Server 2012 R2 virtual machine that's already configured with the RDSH role. This provisioning machine will be used to create an app stack containing Microsoft Office, and once created, this app stack will then be used to enable the RDSH server with the applications, or in this example, our Zen app server. Once the app stack has been created, it is then assigned to the production Zen app server, attached, and then the application is configured for publishing to the end users. If we look at the process in a little more detail, the diagram on screen shows the complete process from building a provisioning machine, provisioning an app stack, and then building a production Zen app server with the app stack attached and ready to deliver applications to the end users. The app volumes components are highlighted in orange in the diagram. And look at how to add the RDSH role to the provisioning server. As part of this, we'll also install the App Volumes agent. We're going to complete the tasks required to prepare for provisioning the app stack by firstly adding the RDSH role to the server and then installing the App Volumes agent. The steps described in the diagram on screen outline the tasks we are going to complete in this section, starting with the build of the RDSH server. They are in the order in which they should be completed and it's important to note that when to install the App Volumes agent in particular, which has been highlighted in orange, along with the other App Volumes specific tasks. In this video we're going to cover the steps from where we add the RDSH role to the provisioning server and then install the App Volumes agent. We're going to start by installing the RDSH role onto our RDSH App Stack provisioning server. Just as a reminder, you need to capture app stacks from the same operating system. So in this instance, it will be a server 2012, and we will install the RDSH role onto this server first. So from the server manager dashboard on the server, we're first of all going to click on add roles and features. Then click on next on the before you begin page. And for installation type, we're going to choose the remote desktop services installation. And then we're going to click next. We're going to choose Quick Start as the deployment type so we can create some default published applications. Then we're going to click on the Next button. And then on the Deployment Scenario, we're going to click the Session Based Desktop Deployments and then click Next. Then we need to select our server, which is already selected here. This is our rdsh-prov.pvolab.com server. So we need to make sure that that's in the box there. And then we're going to click Next to continue. Now we can see the confirmation page of what we're going to install. We're going to install a connection broker, RD Web Access, RD Session Host. And then we need to check the box for restart the destination server automatically if required. When you're ready, click the Deploy button, and then the server will now go ahead and install the remote desktop services onto this server.
So now we can log back into the server as our administrator account and type in the domain and then the administrator password. Once we're logged in, the installation will continue. So now the installation of the RDSH role has completed and we can see that each of the individual components has succeeded. So we can close that and now we can see our remote desktop service is now up and running and also we have IIS running so that you can connect to a browser and launch a remote app. So the next stage we're going to do is we're not going to configure any applications yet as we're going to do that using app stacks. So actually what we're going to do is to provision our app stacks we need to install our app volumes agent. So we're going to browse to the shared folder where we have our app volume software. So slash slash DC VMware software. And here we have our app volumes software. So we're going to click to the ISO image, mount the ISO, click on installation and then double click setup. So this is just a normal installation of app volumes that you'd perform on any other machine, whether it be a server or a virtual desktop operating system. So here's our app volumes installation wizard window. So we click next to continue. Click the radio button to accept the terms of the license and then next. We want to install app volumes agent. So we click the radio button and click install. And now we see our app volumes agent installation wizard. So we click next. The first thing we need to do is enter the IP address of our app volumes manager. So this is our 192. 168.1.40. We'll leave the app volumes manager port default and we we'll check the box to disable cert checking. Click next. When you're happy with the summary of what we're going to install, so the IP address of the app volumes manager is correct, the port details are correct, then we can go ahead and click the install button. So now the agent is being installed on the server. Once the agent has finished, we're going to click the finish button and then we need to restart our server. So we we'll click yes to restart the server. So now the server has rebooted, we can log back in. So log back in as our administrator at pvolab. Com, the administrator password and then we can log in. So we can see now that the app volume service is now starting. And now we've logged in. As with the virtual desktop machine, you won't actually see any app volumes activity on the main screen. All the service has done is installed and is now running in the background. So now the server is back up, the server manager loads with the remote desktop IIS and the app volumes agent now installed. Now we can provision. So if we switch back to our app volumes management console and make sure that the RDSH provisioning server has been registered with the app volumes manager. So from the dashboard, we click on infrastructure and then we click on the machines tab. And here we can see our RDSH app stack provisioning machine and when the app volumes agent was registered. So that means we can now go ahead and start provisioning our app stacks on our RDSH based server.